If you try to do what somebody else does, how would the original, authentic you be seen that God gave you? Do you realize that God gave you something? Maybe it's not to be in a pulpit. Maybe it's to have a talk show. Oh, you think about that. Maybe you're a lawyer. Maybe you're a doctor. Don't know what that thing may be, but everybody on the planet come on, come on. has been given something. Do you know what a diamond does? A diamond is like a prism, and when light hits it, it refracts and reflects different types of colors. Okay? So watch this. You are made like that. You are a piece of the diamond. And as the light of God shines through you, each person will shine a different color. Welcome to Kingdom Life Ministries International of Elizabethtown, Kentucky, headed by senior pastors Dr. Ray and Lillian Romero. We are pleased to present to our viewers, our weekly Sunday service in its entirety, for all those who may have missed the opportunity to view our live broadcast on Facebook, or were unable to visit the church this week. We hope this will be a blessing to you as much as it has been a blessing to us in presenting it. Our featured speaker today is Pastor Chris Harris. Let's proceed straight to the service already in progress. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Let everything, glory to God, that has breath praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. We're excited to be with you all this morning here at Kingdom Life Ministries International in Elizabethtown. Amen. Glory to God. It's a great day. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. We just yes. celebrated uh, Resurrection Sunday. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, and if you all have been watching the news and uh, the world out there knows that we had a, a, a tragic event. Uh, happened on Monday right after resurrection celebration. Amen. Yeah, yeah, and uh, but glory to God, yeah. we uh, we sympathize. We pray for those uh, that uh, that were tragically impacted by this situation. Um, I thank God that uh, throughout the city and of course throughout our state and uh, probably throughout our nation. Uh, people were gathering together and praying and uh, really interceding for uh, what had taken place. So uh, we thank God for that. Uh, we also had an assembly over at uh, Bishop Larry Coleman's Tuesday evening um, and had a fantastic time of intercession and praying and, uh, and believing God for um, whatever God is going to bring out of this situation. Amen. Amen. We don't always know what's happening. We don't always know uh, what the uh, outcome is. Uh, but we do know that God is faithful. Yes. Amen. Right. Amen. And he is able to take a bad situation and turn it around. Yes. And so we thank God for that. Um, also, uh, we are now approaching... Uh, Pentecost Sunday, amen? Yes. amen. We are now approaching, so we're in the Pentecost season. Um, this is the time that Jesus showed himself uh, to his disciples and others. Um, this is the time that uh, the Bible says that graves were opened up and, and the dead got out and walked, amen? And, uh, and miracles were taking place um, all over. Uh, the, the cities and the towns in that area. So uh, we know that this is still the season of victory. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. So don't give up on that. Hold on to that. And uh, we're going to continue to believe God uh, for your victory. Amen? Amen? The victory has already been paid for. That's why the Bible says that you are more than a conqueror. Amen? Uh, you reap the benefits of being the conqueror, even though you didn't go to the battle. All right, Amen. 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 Jesus fought that well, battle for us. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, uh, and we reap the benefits. Glory yes. to God. So, um, as we start our uh, service this morning, I want to open up uh, with Acts chapter 2. Yeah. And this is going to kind of be our theme 
uh, throughout our morning service today as we move forward. And uh, in Acts chapter 2, uh, the title of it is The Gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And it starts in verse 1. It says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Amen. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of <laughs> fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together. And were confounded because that every man heard them speak in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? And so I'm going to pause there just for a minute because uh, the word of God is to every nation and every time. It's not just for a certain group of people. It's not just for the Jews. It's not just for uh, a certain nation. The word of God comes to everybody. And what's specific about this is that Everyone heard the word of God in their own language. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. God's not a respecter of person. Amen. Amen. And so one of the parts to this is it, 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 it illustrates this. It illustrates that we are all different. We are all at different levels in our growth spiritually. We all have our own re different relationship with God, which means that he speaks to us where we are. He speaks to us in a way that we will understand, and he speaks to us in a language that we will comprehend. That's right. Amen? Amen. See, sometimes we can get up here and we can preach a dynamic word, and sometimes uh, that, it seems like that word just goes over our head. That's too much information. I can't grasp all that. But it's the job of the Holy Spirit to take that word and to break it down in a way yes. that you can receive something from the word of God. Yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so as we begin to explore this Pentecost movement that just impacted the believers and turn the world upside down because we are part of it today. The Pentecost that happened over 2,000 years ago today, or right now at that time, you are reaping the benefits of it. We are walking it today. And so we thank God for that. Uh, we're going to hear from a couple of our leaders today as they come up. Um, baby, you have something you want to share this morning? Glory to God. Amen. And then we're going to hear from Dr. Newsom and Bishop's going to come up. And uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So Pastor Ray gave us our word uh, that we were um, going to meditate on. So I'm sitting there like, okay, Lord, you, that ain't what you told me. So uh, I'm just going to give you a word that the Lord gave me Amen. to give to you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. A lot of us are doing a whole lot of things. But Psalms uh, 127, verse 1. I need you to think about this right now. I need you to hear it. Except the Lord build the house, yes. they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep a city, the watchman watcheth in vain. So, glory to God, whatever you're going through right now, whatever God is calling you to do, make sure you line it up with God. Don't just get out there and not count the cost. Don't get out there and think, well, I got this, I got this. Because the Lord says, 
that what we apply to him, he's going to bless. Amen. Amen. What we seek him first, he's going to guide us and lead us. And so many of us, even in the body of Christ, we get out there and we got our plans. But Psalm, what is it? Um, Isaiah 29, 11. He has the plans for you. Yes. Plans yes. of yes. good yes. and not yes. evil to give right. you hope. So I just want to encourage you. Glory to God. Psalms uh, 127 verse 1 says, Unless the Lord build it, whatever you're doing, allow the Lord in your life to direct, lead, and guide you. And that is my word for you prophetically. Hey, come on now. Glory to God. So yeah. receive it. Glory to God. You're going to hear so much word. And God is going to move in your life. Just be open to receive. Again, unless the Lord build a house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And only what we do for Christ will last. Mm -hmm. So we need to go to Christ first. Amen. Amen. God bless you and, and keep you and protect you as you hear more of the word of God. And I pray that the spirit of God is working in your life right now. 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 Good morning, Pastor Chris. Good morning, Father. Good morning to all of you. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to raise this mic because it's not to my height, right? Everybody that comes here is normally be here. I've been watching <laughs> To all of you that are watching this morning, welcome to our church here, Kingdom Life Ministries International, uh, to our uh, Dr. Ray and our senior pastor, Lillian. We welcome you, all of you again. The marking here is the police station, so if you're going through uh, Elizabeth Town, we're right by the police station here in downtown Elizabeth Town. That's the marking. Uh, if you're taking a break, just come and visit us on a Sunday morning. So we welcome you. So our nation in the whole world it is going through a phase, right? But the phase is not new. If you keep reading what Pastor was reading, uh, on, on the second Acts, in verse 14, it says, Peter, Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed to them, Fellow Jews, and all of you resident of Jerusalem, let me explain this to you, and pay attention to my words. For these people are not drunk. Yeah. As you suppose, on. it's only nine in the morning. Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. On the contrary, yeah. this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. Uh -huh. And it will be in the last day. Somebody say last day. Last day. Yeah. So there's a confusion. In the text, it's saying the last day started in the day of Pentecost. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Re-engineering the text, uh -huh. we just have a, a, a different context of what time is. Yeah. Right. But in the text, Peter's quoting Joel. Yeah. He says, yeah. in the last days. Yeah. Come on, man. Uh -huh. Let me read what he says. Uh -huh. the, and it will be in the last days, the last says God, day. Come on, now. that I will pour out my spirit on all people. Come on, now. Then your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young man will see visions, and your old man will dream dreams. Yes. I will even pour out my spirit on my servants on those days, yes. both men and women, and you will prophesy. Now, it didn't say just men will prophesy. Uh -huh. It will say women will prophesy yeah. too. Yeah. Where are they supposed to be prophesying oh, now? Yeah. Yeah. the Holy Spirit come on them? Are they going to be prophesying their, their seats to themselves? Hey, come on. Glory to God. This come text on. challenges the way we see women in services. Right. I'm just bringing it because it's clear wow. something that we're strong yeah. in the church, right? Don't say that. That's what it says here. Yes, it does. Come on. I, I'm just saying, it's something the church still struggle with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you put it back to here. I will display wonders in the heavens. Uh -huh. Above and signs on the earth. If, if you understand what that means, again, this week, Four, four stars, four planets align themselves this week again. Again, right. we've been talking about this, yeah. right? Yeah. I will display uh -huh. wonders in the heaven above yeah. and signs on the earth below. Yeah. Blood and fire in a cloud of smoke. Mm. The sun will be turned dark uh, to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord to come. Uh -huh. Again, oh these texts design always to prepare you to be at a state of readiness. Mm. Right. 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 As a soldier, we have to be always ready always to battle, ready. always ready to defend, uh -huh. defend. Yeah. So our country and the whole world 
is un still under God's wrath. People forget that. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. people forget what God's wrath look like. Uh -huh. And God is not a the text says God is not a respecter of person. Right. That's right. So what happens <laughs> in in Nashville? What happens in mm -hmm. Louisville? What yeah. happens everywhere? Yeah. God is not a respecter of person. <laughs> uh, right, the only right. thing you and I can do is God protect me in these times. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Come That's on. it. Yeah. Protect me, but yet we do not want to be desensitized to those that are mourning. Right. Mm -hmm. So we pray with them, we mourn with them, mm -hmm. and we say, God, protect mm -hmm. their faith. Yes, 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 yes. Let whatever they're going through do not destroy their faith on this mm -hmm. morning. That's the only thing we can do for them. Mm -hmm. Mourn with them, pray for them. Yeah. God hold them while they're going through their own, right? Because right? it could be you. Me, you, as we, That's we right. are bad drivers too. That's right, 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 right. We make bad decisions behind the wheel too. Right. Right? We could be the one that get crushed by, I'm just being frank. Come on, come on, come on. That's right. Because you all drive from Louisville here to come to church every day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But God is your keeper. That's right. right. That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. God is your keeper while you sleep. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. Come on. You got to be frank and truthful. Amen. 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 I, the, the only reason I woke up is because God willed it. Because Amen. God Amen. chose Amen. it, so. Amen. Praise People God. often forget that. Mm. Come on. We take that for granted. Especially us Christian folks. That's right. Well, we yeah. often forget those things. But this morning, I want to remind you. The text is in the last days. In that last days, and, and Peter's mind started in the day of Pentecost mm. because the Holy Spirit came to all men. Yeah, man. Yeah, as right. you brought. Yeah. The Holy that's Spirit right. came to all men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every generation, during that same generation, they were ready for they were waiting for Jesus Christ to come. Mm -hmm. It's in the Bible. Right. That's right. They were waiting. They thought Jesus Christ was coming on their time. Right. Right. Come on. Because in their mind, Jesus says, I'm not too far along. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Everybody tracking here? Yeah. We're tracking? Yeah. So in their mind, Jesus is coming in my generation. Right. In every generation after that, as they saw chaos, they thought Jesus, time was coming. Mm. So I want to remind everybody, hold on to your seat mm. and remember Psalms 91. Mm. The only yes. reason I'm alive is because I got protection all around Come me. On. Come Come on. Come on. It's because I got angels all around yeah, me. Yeah, and yeah, because yeah. God is the only one that can remember your days. Mm. Right. I just yes. want to strengthen you today. Mm. As our country goes through this reshaping, <laughs> reforming, request correction. Ah, Come it's the course correction. Mm. All right. The only reason you will understand what I mean by that, you got to read the book of Esther. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to understand Haman's story. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Right. Haman's story, mm -hmm. and that's all I'm gonna leave it there. Right. There's a course correction in America going on. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will misunderstand. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'm gonna pray for you. I'm going to ask to believe that God puts you at a position to see mm. from a prophetic eye. All right, right. All right. All right. So you will not Open lose faith. Nice. Come on. Yeah. I want to operate at a higher dimension. Yeah. So God put me at a different place mm -hmm. to see so that I will not lose my faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some things are just plain ugly that's going on. That's right. right. Amen. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm standing, I'm, I'm going to be real with you yeah. this morning. Yeah. Some yeah. things are just went ugly going yeah. on right yeah. now in the world. Yeah. But our country is under for a reason. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why not us, right. America? Yeah. Why not us? Mm -hmm. Why not? Why God cannot use us as an example today? That's right. To shape the way the world Come on, sees. Come on. Now you're tracking? Yeah. I'm going to stand there. Somebody's going to throw a rock at me. I don't care. But I'm going to see my God before. I don't yeah. care when it happens. I'm going to get out of here, Pastor. But it's, mm -hmm. it's so important. Mm -hmm. Because on Tuesday, we had our service. Yeah. But I want you to hold on to your belt. Because America's under the microscope. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is. It is. You have yeah. to read the book of Esther to understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. In America, yeah. Okay. When I came back two years ago, somebody asked me, "Why are you going back? Mm. Why are you going back as a serviceman? Why, as a black person, are you going back when you could get shot while running in the street?" Right. Mm. Well, Everybody tracking? Yeah. Well, right. yeah, yeah. Come on. While you running, you could get shot, brother. Why are you going back to the United States? That's the only place I know. Mm. Come on now. Uh -huh. I'm gonna go back to the. I'm an American citizen. Yeah. Right. Come on now. 
Everybody have to understand this. Mm. So there's an equilibrium oh. taking place here. Mm. That's right. And it don't look pretty for us. But that's yeah. that's the place that God has placed us to Amen. be. And that's Amen. what I'm going to leave you out today. Yes. This is real for all of us Christians and mm -hmm. all of us Americans going through this in America. I just want to encourage you to stay in your faith till today. Amen. And may God bless you as we see the next visitor come. Amen. 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 God bless you, God bless you, and happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday. Sunday. Happy Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Happy Sunday to all those who have joined us uh, here uh, that have come to, 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 lend, to lend their voice uh, into us today. And all, all those of you who are joining us on, <coughs> on Facebook Live and different other media, God bless you. And good morning. Uh, Pastor Newsom has given us a very sobering uh, 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 and a very honest uh, uh, evaluation of some things that are happening. But, but the Lord wants to have us in a place. He wants his clear eye, but he wants to have us in a place. So my scripture to today actually comes, uh, comes with the, uh, uh, that same conversation. Going to, uh, uh, starting off in, in 1 John 1 and, and 4, okay? And in John 1 and 4, because he's looking at the same time when a lot of stuff was happening in, in, in the world. We wanted to make sure to, 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 to that we could get ourselves into a place to where we start to, to fret, okay? No, no, understand this. Look at this. Look at this. Understand <laughs> this. But don't, don't fret. So, is it, if these things are writing to you, mm. that your joy may be full. Yeah. Mm. Well, mm. Not your happiness. You have to be happy about this. Mm -hmm. But you can still have joy in it. Mm -hmm. no, knowing that, that he who, 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 who determines yeah. these things mm -hmm. is God, yeah. Yeah. your yeah. Father. Yeah. And he's got control over everything. Okay? And these things are writing to you that your joy may be full. Mm. So, so, so he still wants us joyous, regardless of what's happening yeah, in our life. Yeah, yeah. We still come before him, come before him with praise and with joy, knowing that he is God. Yes. yes. And these things, and this is the message which we have heard of him and declaring to you that God is light mm. and him is no darkness at all. Praise God. And he said, fellowship with him and walk in darkness and we lie and do not the truth. So that, so that basically was the start of what I wanted to have, have a conversation for. Mm -hmm. And and at just this moment, the, 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 this thing has gone past, but you won't get this, Satan. You won't get it. But, but because the, the Lord wants us to hear something else, okay? And, 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 and so we've already discussed uh, that God is light and that those things have happened and he gave us this information so that he would know, so that we have a joy in him. So he gave us one more place that we should find ourselves in. This is the place where, regardless of what is happening, I don't find myself in this, in this place, okay? Glory to God. 27th chapter of Psalms, the Lord is my light. All yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And, my. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and my salvation, of whom shall I fear? Come on. I don't care what else is happening. Mm. I don't care what else they do. I, 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 I was I was in the war zone and there was and, and, and there was bullets and I had been working for almost eighteen hours that day. I'm so tired. I wanted to uh, put back some and different other military. But I wanted to go home and but I, I had to walk uh, almost a mile t to where I was sleeping and, and they were having some some type of, of deal there and you could hear the bullets hitting the window outside as they were shooting up in the air and the bullets were falling. And I'm going, oh Lord, man, I'm so tired. I want to go home. And the Lord said, then go. I said, look, I can't go walking out through there. And they're shooting people and all that. And the Lord said, the Lord said you know, well, okay, but the guy that shoots the bullets is not, is not accountable to me. He's not accountable to me. But the air mm. that the bullets fly through is. Mm -hmm. I, I put my coat on. I, walked, I put my coat on. I walked out of that building and went back to my, to my tent and went to sleep. Because that a bullet is going to fall out of that sky unless God says it's going to fall out of that sky yeah. and hit Brother Bill. Uh, it can yeah. rain all over me. The yeah. bullets can rain over me. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, but, but not one of them is going to enter into my body unless God says so. Yeah. So the Lord is my light. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? When the wicked and even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Uh-huh. The Bible says, I made the smith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have made the smith uh -huh. and his weapons of war. 
Therefore, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that raises against you, you shall condemn. Mm, yeah. Isn't that something I did, Pastor? I, 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 I didn't do anything other, other than I was born into this. This is the heritage of those who believe. And their righteousness is from me, says the most high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all these things that are happening in the world, we, we should go forward and we should be clear-eyed about those things. Yeah. But to understand that the Lord is our light. He's our illumination. The, 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 the light comes on to we, where we can see where we're going to go. He is the designer of my path. And, and... Not only is he my illumination, but he's also my salvation. So in him is my life. In him is the strength of my life. Everything that I have, everything that I own, everything that I believe in, the very strength of everything that makes me me is in God. That's the fact. That's the simple question. Whom should I fear? My enemies and my foes, whoever those people are. My enemies is the people that hate me because they just hate me, and the foes because of some of some. I did some of those things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm guilty of some of that stuff. Some of the people are angry with me for a good reason. Yeah. But even then, when they came upon me to eat up my flesh, mm. when they wanted me dead, they stumbled and fell. Yes. Because my salvation is not in me, mm -hmm. but it's in God. So let's find ourselves that way, understanding what's happening in our world. Understanding the things that are happening in our world, seeing with a clear, open, and bright eye the things that are happening in our world, but understanding that our salvation is in God. Amen. Our salvation is in God. It's not in ourselves. Our salvation is in the Most High. We are dead and raised again with Christ to live in Him in this world. And so our salvation is in God. Yes. Bought by the blood and the resurrection, blood by the blood. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, right. That's a receipt. Yeah. And that empty grave is a receipt mm. of our salvation. Yeah. <laughs> so we go so. forward in it without fear, right. looking at it clear eyes, Jesus. chin up, whatever is happening, okay. Right. So I'm a child of God. I belong to Him. Right. And my right. life is in His hands. Right. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the moments of this day. We thank you for the blessings of this day, Father. You, as we go into this service, we honor you as our God. And as our Lord, as our Savior, as our Redeemer, as our Keeper, as a lifter up of our heads. We thank you, Father God, for everything you've done and everything you are. We exalt you as God. We exalt you as our Lord. We exalt you as our Keeper. We exalt you as our Supplier. We exalt you as everything that we need. And we thank you for everything you are. Bless us, Father God, and accept this, this service, this time that we come before you. This praise and worship is entering into your gates with thanksgiving and into your very inner course with praise. Mm. Giving you the honor that you deserve, that your name deserves. Mm. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. We bless you for everything you are. Mm -hmm. Bless us, Father, as we go into the service. Mm. Open our hearts and our minds. We will hear what the Spirit is saying to us. We give people this day. Mm. And we bless you and we honor you as our God, as our love, mm -hmm. as our desire. In the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, praise God as we continue in yes. our uh, Pentecost celebration, amen. Yes, everything you, you can actually tie everything that all of them said mm. into Pentecost, yes, sir. Amen. Yes. amen. Everything yes, sir. you tied into Pentecost, yes, so, God, and that's yes. where we are. Uh, so we're gonna have our uh, morning speaker come up and gonna share with us, glory to God. Uh, he's no stranger to this house, and probably no stranger for the, those of y'all that are viewing with us. Um, he has started his own podcast and uh, services online. And, uh, and you can catch him. Yes. Uh, he'll give you the information on how to uh, link into uh, his uh, messages that he's putting out there uh, and getting ready to start uh, some other uh, programs, uh, get things going. So, praise God, if you will. Put your hands together as our very own Pastor Chris Harris comes. And the Lord Amen, amen, amen. Yes, sir. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, for 
for some of you that may or may not know, I will go on record publicly and I will say this. Since Dr. Romero didn't say it, I'm going to say it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, he's still listening to what you're getting ready to say. <laughs> I don't need to be concerned. <laughs> but Dr. Romero yes. and his wife, Lily Romero, are not just dear friends to me, but are spiritual parents of mine. Yes. And really helped to nurture me in the faith. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about that. Spiritual parenting doesn't mean that you'll agree with everything together. Okay. But it does mean that the heart and character and approach that they take is that they care about you and discipling you. Yes. I want to tell you that there is a vast difference between a follower and discipleship. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes. Know the difference. Yes. Because you have many leaders out there, and trust me, I'm 44 and I grew up in a ministerial family. Yes. I have all of my uncles are either yes. preachers pastors or deacons yes. all the way to the women. Yeah. And they all sing too. Yes. All right, all right. All right. One of them. <laughs> so it's, 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 Good. I, was, I was cultured in the family. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've been inundated and in ministry for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Denominational, non-denominational, <laughs> cleaning bathrooms, cleaning closets. Come on, come on, come on. Kids ministry, youth ministry, yes. you name it, I've probably been a part of it. At some point. <laughs> and I say all that to say that I've seen a lot, and you have a lot of leaders that it's easier to create a follower than it is to disciple them. Because discipleship is laborious, labor intensive work. Right. A follower, I don't need to labor over a follower. A follower, I just need you to look like what I put out. Yes. I don't need you to have any intelligence to the table. I don't need you to ask any questions. I don't need you to push back. I don't need you to think for yourself. I just need you to copy what you see, and that's good enough. I need you to show up and be a number, a person in a seat, so that when I go to my pastor's meeting, I can say to how many people, I have this many people in my church, and I can look all big and natural and happy. Speak the truth, brother. But it's like there is a movie, yes. and it's a movie called The Spartans. Okay. Or the, but the 300 is what it's called, actually, The Spartans. And they had a culture in there where they showed up, and the guy had more numbers than he did. And he looks at him, and he says, you don't have that many soldiers. Mm. And so the leader, he looked at him, he said, he started asking his men, the men, the guy who had more. He says, you there, what do you do? Oh, I'm a farmer. You, what do you do? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm a blacksmith. You, what do you do? And each one, he went to about a few people asking them, what do you do? And every one of them gave him their own occupation. Yeah, yeah. And so then he just turns and says, Spartans! And all of them with one accord and one voice. Uh -huh. Oof. <laughs> they were soldiers. All right. Every one of them uh -huh. trained soldiers. <laughs> And what you get out of that, it was a mindset yes. mm -hmm. where you can have 10,000. I'm not against numbers. Come on. But you can have 100, 200, 300 people in a building at one time. And do you know that the national average by Barnea, mm -hmm. people that do statistics on things, okay. things collect okay. data, to become a mega church, the average statistics is about 250. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You consider it a mega church. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now that's a small mega church per se if you're looking at it on general consensus, but nonetheless, you are a mega church. Mm. And then as you grow up from there, again, you can do a lot with a lot of numbers. Mm -hmm. But the only thing is, right. is that you can have all these numbers, but when a situation comes up, <laughs> come on. You know, are we waiting around to maybe the staff's gonna handle it? Well, the pastors are going to handle mm -hmm. it. I want to go over here to church so I can get my worship experience and mm -hmm. that's going to be good for the day. Mm -hmm. I will have done my due diligence in being a Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out to eat today and I'm going to be nice today to the waitress or the waiter. I'm going to leave them a good tip. Yes. On this day, 
I'm not even going to let people know how they're number one when I'm driving in the car. <laughs> this day I'm just going to do things a bit differently. Yes. And the problem with that is when you live a life like that because that's both sides. Maybe you didn't hear it this way because most preachers will make it one-sided. I'm not this type of person. Mm. Believe me, I have accepted for well what my call is, what my purpose is into the body, and I am comfortable in it and I'm okay. Come on, come on. There's at some point you have to come to a point where you are comfortable in your own skin. Mm. Right. As great as Dr. Romero and Delilian are, guess what? They want you to carry out the character and nature of Christ in the uniqueness of who you are. Yes. Amen. Do you know that's why you have different likes, different tastes, right. different flavors, and the way that you do something? As great as your favorite preacher may be, God does not desire you to get up and start doing what they do. No. Right. Because if you try to do what somebody else does, how would the original, authentic you be seen that God gave you? Do you realize that God gave you something? Yes. Maybe it's not to be in a pulpit. Maybe it's to have a talk show. Oh, I didn't think about that. Mm. Maybe you're a lawyer. Maybe you're a doctor. Maybe you're an engineer. Mm. Maybe you have a desire to draw. Don't know what that thing may be, but everybody on the planet come on, come on. has been given something. Mm. Do you know what a diamond does? A diamond is like a prism, mm. and when light hits it, it refracts and reflects different types of colors. Amen. Okay? So watch this. You are made like that. You are a piece of the diamond. Mm. And as the light of God shines through you, each person will shine a different color. Yes. That color represents the nature of God yes. that you reveal in the earth yes. greater and better than anybody else mm -hmm. because you were made that way. Mm -hmm. Nobody can roar like a lion can roar. <laughs> Nobody can fly like an eagle can fly. That's right. right. When an eagle wants to get tips on flying, an eagle doesn't go see the National Air Pilot. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, they're as great as the American Airlines may be. They don't go to the, uh, they, they don't even go to the military and go to the ones that fly the fi fighter jets. They don't even go to them and say, what's the best way of how to do this? Mm. Because they have it built within them in eight yes. of what it means to fly. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, What I'm actually talking about today Come on now. <laughs> is, on all of that, is the arrival of the sons of God in the earth. At some point, you have to not be a follower right. and you have to become a disciple. Do you know disciple has within it the word where we get discipline? Yes. Mm. Yeah. See, you can, here's one thing I know. I am not very athletically inclined. Anybody that's been around me knows this. My son got that gift. My grandson got that gift. I did not get that gift, so I'm just going to tell you right now. I didn't get that gift. Uh -huh. There's plenty of people in here that I can promise you, if we got on a basketball court, you'd probably take me. Come on. But here's what I do know. Even though I have no athletic ability as far as talent given to me like that mm -hmm. to just naturally pick up a basketball and just roll with it. No. What I do know is this. If you put me with somebody, oh, I don't know. Let's say some of my connections got me to where I was able to maybe do some drills with Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually know some people now. Uh -huh. I actually uh -huh. do know some people uh -huh. from my family. They helped me out with that. Okay. And if I spent some time with this guy, he would take me through drills. And if I disciplined myself and he said, now when you go home, do this. And when you return back next week for the next two or three days that we're together, we're going to work on this. Mm -hmm. Now, if I went home and I never put into practice the drills that he gave me to put into practice, uh -huh. I'm probably not going to last that long in that program. Yeah. That's right. 
Why? Because I'm not, there's something you, there's a part you have to play. That's right. Now, I was going to get some of these things at the end, and it just never works that way for me. Come on, so, the way this is coming, this is just coming out. So, I'm just going to give you something let right the Lord, now. Let the Lord send you, brother. There are some things that you let need to get rid of out of your vocabulary right. so that you can grow. All right. One of those words and phrases is this. This right here that I'm getting ready to say, it sounds so holy, it sounds so good. We have said it over and over, but it is completely unchristlike. All right. You will not find this phrase when I'm getting ready to say what we have made even like this. It, I'm trusting when I say it, everybody in the room is going to notice it. You're going to re recognize it. You will recognize it. Man, I said that myself. I said it. Yeah. I said it, but I'm telling you, it is extremely unbiblical. And it is extremely unchristlike, and it is the worst thing you could possibly <laughs> say. Mm. All right. One of them. Here it is. Mm. All right, here comes the sacred cow. Come on. <laughs> Bring gonna, the cow. Let me, let me get in my moment. Let me get in my moment. Uh, 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 That's what we do. Oh, God. Oh, God. All of you, none of me. <laughs> All of you, just none of me. Uh -huh. You know, one morning, I was singing unto the Lord, and I was just. Sing this song in the sense like, there's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you. I'm in my living room, hear me? I don't have anybody else around me. I'm in my living room. I'm like, God, there's nobody like you. God, there's nobody like you. And I guess Holy Spirit had had enough. And Holy Spirit said, yes, there is. You are. Oh, come on. All right. Okay. I can tell that probably didn't. <laughs> we heard that. We're like, okay, what? Okay. Nice. This is where discipleship comes in. At some point, you have to stop following and you have to discipline with, you know what that means? That means intention. That means on purpose. Yes. Amen. See, I wasn't very good at math. Math was not a strong subject for me. But the jobs that I had worked at have required me to take tests that require me to pass at a certain level of math. Well... When I worked the last job before I had this one here, it was a great paying job. I had to take a college level entry test. And you had you only got one shot. You had to score a certain level for them to even consider you. This is before you even get, put your resume in. This is before you fill the application out. They said, okay, you're going to go take this test. When I looked over the test, I thought, oh my goodness. There was a good section in there, and it was two, not one, two different math portions. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget going over to the adult education center, an <laughs> Hispanic lady who happened to be a pastor, her and her husband, where I didn't know that at the time. And I remember I was working as a contractor at the <clears throat> company that I wanted to work for full time. And I started going down to the adult education center on my days off. And on the times that I made time to do it. Why did I do that? Because I wasn't getting paid for it. All right. I wasn't going down to the education center. And when I walked in, they would say, okay, after you complete so many hours, you're going to write you a check. Wasn't no check. Wasn't no money. Why was I doing it? Because I knew that I needed to up my math game. So she was giving me material that was directly related to the test material that I was going to take. Because I didn't just want to pass it. I needed to really pass it. And I found something out about that. I changed my thinking. Come on, come on. Because somebody told me, you're just not that good at math. And I changed my thinking, and even today I have it. And that is, I am pretty good at math. Amen. Oh, I just got to work at it a little bit. There you go. I may not have that natural talent. Like my grandson and my daughter, they got that. Jeremiah's nine years old, and he can figure stuff out in his head like that. Trips me out. I'm like, really? Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, here's the thing. Discipleship requires discipline, mm -hmm. intention, and on purpose. To go somewhere. So if you're going to. Scripture says in Romans 8. The earth. Hear this. The earth. Let me take the text. Romans 8. So I can be legal. Just like the scripture Father said there. Got, got to take the text. Got to be legal. <laughs> Romans 8. 19. Reading from the 
uh, ESV. Depending upon what church you're in, the ESV or the KJV may be the right version. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the right version. One of the things about me that I do in my ministry, it's called Grains of Sand Ministry. I will say that. And um, I do a teaching on every Sunday. It's virtual where I'm teaching. It's a teaching style format, teaching people. It's discipleship and teaching people how to be and do what God has called them to be. And we go over material like this. We spent this morning the whole time for a whole hour just going over the foundation over one word. Wow. Concerning faith. Wow. Mm. We went all the way, but we go back to the origins of where this thing originated. Mm -hmm. What 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 was in this thing? And we we fleshed this out. That was just doing that. Mm. Come on. So watch this. Romans 8, 19. For the creation waits with eager longing mm. for the revealing Come on. of the sons of God. Now, let me just say this for a minute because I gotta get this part. Sons of God doesn't mean all men. Come on. Okay? It, it, it's a title that they used for supreme one of authority and power because Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Yes. Now, let me throw something at you here. In Genesis 1, 26 to 28, it says that God said, let us make mankind in our image mm -hmm. after our likeness. The name of God is Elohim, yeah. which means one of supreme authority and power. Yes. Yahweh means self-existent one. So do you want to know the name of the first man and woman? Mm. It was Yahweh Elohim. Come on. Self-existent ones of authority and power. Mm. So what do you do with that? <laughs> you got two, not one. Did, so, so look, look, look. I'm not going to go here today. Let me just throw this out here. Did God give the woman a lesser spirit? <laughs> we have two people that have supreme authority and power. Yes. What? How's this going to work? Let me just tell you. Come on. Because when you have two leaders, it happens off of mutual agreement. That's actually the true, oh, I'm going to say this, my gosh, I'll probably get in trouble for this one. That is the true definition, the pure definition of what submission actually is. Mm -hmm. mm, come on. Because mm -hmm. you can't have two people, two leaders, mm -hmm. and one leader of one country saying, I'm coming over there and this is how it's going to be. Because that leader in that country says, oh, really? Well, I'll meet you at the border. We'll just see how it's going to be there. Mm -hmm. Not going to work. They're not just going to lay down and just let you come in there. It's not going to work that way. But come let us reason together. Yeah. Recognize the scriptures? Mm -hmm. yes. Come let us reason together. Mm -hmm. Do you realize the relationship of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is not built off of a hierarchy like you think in our westernized culture? It is built in synchronization mm -hmm. of love. Mm -hmm. It's mutual agreement. Mm -hmm. See, the son has no less authority than the father. Father has no less authority than Holy Spirit. So there's an agreement. When Jesus used certain words like that, it was because Jesus was in the earth in a physical form. Mm. Come on. Come on. And Jesus was painting the picture of this is what a son looks like. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. Something was said to me. Come on. So, walking like a son, and son implies just the title of authority that you have. Say this with me. Say, I have been given. I have, I have been, been given, given the name, the name and, title and title of all authority and power. All authority and power. Say, so that's talking about me. It's talking that's about me. Okay. Just yes. know this. Women, you are 100% equally included. Yes. Mm. Not by. Right there. Amen. Included. Right. Because when God made man and woman, Come on. man and woman were made after the image and likeness of God. Amen. Yes. Period. Come on. End of story.
Period. That's mm. where it's at. We gotta get rid of some of these old things. We gotta... So, back to what I said just a while ago. Again, you want to lose out of your vocabulary phrases like all of you, none of me. And you can't use John's, that passage we use, he must increase that I can decrease. Okay, let me help you with that context. John the Baptist, Jesus said, watch this, I'm going to use Jesus's, I'm going to use the lens of Jesus. Yes. Jesus said that no greater prophet has been risen up than wow. that of John. Right. Jesus said the law and the prophets were until John. Yes. That means John was the end, the last one of law and prophets. Yes. The prophets, they always prophesied out of their covenant, which was in the law. Yes. They did not deviate out of it. And then Jesus goes further and says, but yet one who is least in the kingdom, that means a baby in the kingdom, is greater than that one. Yes. So when John the Baptist said, he must increase that I can decrease, he was actually correct. We just misinterpreted it wrong. Come on, come on, come on. That means Jesus must increase and become bigger. Mm. While the law that we lived under has to decrease and die. Yes. It has to end. It has to go away. That's what it says later that it says Christ is the end of the law yeah. to all who believe. Right. Okay? So we're talking about, again, mm. arriving in the manifestation of the sons of God. Do you know that it is not a question to become a son of God? It is a command? Mm. But why is that? You said you never got them finished reading Romans 8. Yeah. Right, let me finish it. <laughs> <laughs> For the creation, Romans 8, 19, yeah. waits with eager longing mm. for the revealing of the sons of God. Did you see that? Mm. The creation. Why would creation be waiting for us? Let's keep reading. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly. In other words, it didn't do it willingly because it wasn't its natural order. But because of him who subjected it in hope, that creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain freedom of the glory of the children of God. Yes. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit. Now watch this. Grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. I don't know if you know this or not, but your major purpose and every person's major purpose on this planet. Let me back up for a minute. That's why healing the sick, raising the dead. Did yeah. you know that's actually elementary? Come on, man. You know why it's elementary? Mm -hmm. Because your major purpose mm -hmm. is to reconcile and redeem the earth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. You've read it, heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. It's not correct. Mm -hmm. It's not heaven and earth. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay? Yeah. Let me just help you with a few things. Mm -hmm. Do you know, for the <laughs> Hebrews, for the Jews, what we consider north, heaven? Watch this now. And north and our compassing even is everything is north is like the center point for all the others. Do you know what it is for them? Mm. It's east. Nah. You know why it's east? Because it says in Genesis that God planted a garden Eden east. Mm -hmm. East. Mm -hmm. The garden was in the east. Mm -hmm. It's a thing for them. Yeah. So, before we start saying heaven is up here, in the beginning God created, let me help you, mm. the heavenly earth. What your spirit is to your body, heaven is to the earth. Yeah. The earth's breathing, but you're called to reconcile it. I know. 
you were taught that you were just here to win souls. And let me help you, it's more than that. <laughs> you are here to literally restructure and shift the earth to become a place that can habitate heaven. Yes. Let me tell you the background story of how they did this. The Romans, when they wanted to conquer an area, they would come to your city because you had the major part, the home city of Rome, that Caesar, who was called the King of Kings. Just to put some context there. Yeah. If you said King of Kings in that day, everybody would know, oh, he's talking about Caesar. Caesar. Because you had other kings that were under Caesar. That's why he was called King of Kings. Caesar stayed in the homeland of Rome. And when Rome wanted to conquer other areas, they would go to your city outside of Rome with troops and you would get the opportunity to come under Roman law mm. and protection. Yes. <laughs> now there's a catchphrase to that. Come on. Because you could say no, but Rome and everybody knew at that time, really, you were just going to do this. You're going to say no. Because you know how this is going to end. So why don't you just say yes and save us all the bloodshed and trouble? <laughs> That's what it was. What the armies did that were uh, up against them. Mm. So, and, they, and they knew this. Yes. So when they would go into the city, after the agreement was made, the first thing they would do, because Caesar would visit these cities outside of Rome, the first thing they would do is they would take some people that were living, natives that lived, actually, people that actually lived in Rome. It was their homeland. They would send them out, doctor, mm. to, yeah. out of Rome into these foreign cities. Mm -hmm. And they would be an assemblage of people that would live in this foreign city. Yes. The purpose of this, the people that were from Rome living in a foreign city was that they would naturally carry the culture of Rome with them. Come on now. Then they would also send a governor. The governor was there to comfort and give instruction to the ones that were sent out of Rome into the foreign city to help keep them on track. Mm. The governor helped stabilize and keep all the ones that were sent out of Rome into the foreign city. Say, hey, this is the plan. The governor heard everything that Caesar would say and do and knew the will of Caesar. And the governor was there to make sure that the will of Caesar remained in force. Mm -hmm. Now, you may recognize some of this because the governor for us is Holy Spirit. Come on now. That's what Jesus was talking about. Uh -huh. Ek called out ecclesia. Uh -huh. Church was not a word that was actually used. It was called an assembly that was called out. Yes. That's what you are. Come on. So stop using, here's another language barrier, another growth tip. <laughs> Come up with something else, please. Mm. Besides, we're going to church. Mm -hmm. Stop. You are the church. Amen. Come on. You, the people. Come up with something we're going to assemble together yeah. with other members of the body. Yes. You might think that's silly. I'm telling you. Yeah. Look, it's you don't believe me, do it for 30 days. And if nothing changes, go back to what you were doing. Yeah. Just try it for 30 days. Yeah. That's all I ask. That's my challenge to you. Yeah. Try it for 30 days. Mm. I know it's going to be a little catchphrase. I'm going to church. I'm going to assemble with the other believers. Mm. Just try it for 30 days. Just try it. That's all I ask. Mm. Give it 30 days of commitment. Yes. yes. And if nothing has changed, if you can't notice the difference, then go back and do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, let me move on. Yeah. Caesar would not set foot in this foreign land mm -hmm. unless it smelled, looked, and functioned like Rome. Come on, man. Caesar would visit. And Caesar would not get out of that carriage mm -hmm. if it didn't function, mm. smell, Come on. and look like Rome. Wow. Mm. And then Caesar would get with the governor mm. and find out what do we need to do. Mm. And then the governor would get with those who were called out the assembly that was called out of Rome and saying, okay, what are you guys doing? We need to, you are a people of influence. Mm -hmm. 
And you all's responsibility is to make this foreign land habitable for me to come and live here if I wanted to. Wow. Do you realize that is what your call is? Mm. Yes. Listen, as oh, yeah. much as I like to say it, but we're not called to just keep building buildings and top buildings. That's right. <laughs> I mean, at some point, I mean, you do realize there ain't enough buildings to hold everything. Somebody has to have figured that part out by now. And at some point, it has to be bigger than just gathering in a bunch of stadiums. You do know we have community streets and homes and all these other places where we need to be influencing at. Well, yeah. I'm just going to say this. Everybody's not called to be a song leader, a preacher, and a pastor in a church. That's right. It might shock some people. But guess what? Called out of the body simply means that you're in the body, but you may have a different function in the body. Right. right. Again, your function in the body might be to be a school teacher. Mm -hmm. You might have a passion for that. Mm -hmm. And too many times, I think we as leaders have done a horrible job at trying to, your hand, <laughs> but yet we're, we as a leader are a foot, and we're trying to make you look like a foot. Mm. And you keep failing because you're a hand. And I keep trying to get you to look like a foot. Yes. Yep. You're never going to be a foot. Because no. you weren't made to be a foot. You are made to be a hand. That's right. <laughs> mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Let us talk about how this works real quick. Okay, then we'll be finished. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's go there. So, if you're going to walk... As and manifest as a son, I'm going to show you concretely how this happens. I'm going to show you, so pay attention. It's real simple. I'm not going to read through all this, but I encourage you, verse 12. Mm -hmm. it says this in verse 15. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies... over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. I want you to notice something about that. Turns to the Lord. Didn't. It didn't say, I had to ask the Lord to come in. Uh-oh. When one turns to the Lord. Yes, sir. Do you notice what repent means? It means to turn yes, and change how you think and how you see God. Okay. That's the basis of real repentance, mm -hmm. is to turn and change. Turn your thinking around and change how you've been seeing God. Mm. Do you realize you cannot effectively walk as a child of God to manifest the things God wants you to do until mm. you see God the way that Jesus sees God? says, when the veil is removed, when one turns, where the Spirit of the Lord is, Pentecost, mm. there is freedom. So, here I have a little rag here, mm -hmm. the veil. Can't really see my face, but you know a face is there. Yes. <laughs> you know a face is there. You said, I know there's a face there. But if you didn't know me, you don't know definitively, what's this person got? What are they hiding under there? There's no definition. And it's like, I said this yesterday, it's like a GPS map. Yes. A GPS map shows you a generic rendering of an actual reality. But it is not the reality. Mm -hmm. When you get to the reality, I could pull it up right now, and this building would be on a GPS map. But you would not see the definitive versions of it. Jesus is the definitive version yes. of what was the thing they looked at. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay? Yeah. Watch this. Transformation in this doesn't come because you do the things that Jesus did. Mm. Let's say it again. Uh-oh. I got to hit myself. Ah, I did. Okay. Verse 18. I'm sorry. And we with all, all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. So transformation comes by what you focus on. Yes. 
What are you giving your attention to? Mm. It's in your mind's eye. Come on. That's what, whatever you listen. If I say something right now, whatever comes up in your thought process first is what you believe about that. Mm -hmm. That is how you see that. Yes. So the transformation doesn't come because you do some things that Jesus did. Mm -hmm. It comes because you see the Father the way Jesus saw the Father. John 14 and 9 says this. Well, 14, 6 and 9, okay? Jesus said, no one comes to the Father but by me. Now, we have used that verse way out of context <laughs> to make it a verse of getting you into heaven. It's not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus used certain, several passages and words talking about the Father. He said, no one knows the Father except the Son. He says, all who came before me are robbers and thieves. Then Jesus told Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yes. That's what he said. So this means that the place of origin for all creation and how God actually is, is literally in Jesus. If you view scripture or God outside of the God that Jesus revealed, you are looking at a distorted image of God. We say the blood of Jesus Christ better things than that of Abel. Does anybody ever wonder what it's crying? Can I tell you? I'll just tell you. Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When you look at what Abel's blood was crying out for, it was vengeance. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus didn't cry vengeance. Jesus cried forgiveness. This is, and now is the judgment. I know that's a big one. <laughs> Let me help you with that one. There you go. Judgment right there was what Jesus was going to accomplish by giving himself into the darkness, into mankind's hands of evil and everything they could put on him. And Jesus consumed it in love. The whole purpose was to kill on the cross that old Adam that had a separated mentality from God and resurrect as the last Adam of all of creation in him and move from that point. Amen. Okay, let me finish. Here's a few other things. The presence of God is here now because we are here. Amen. Seriously. Amen. So when you go home, guess what? The presence of God is there. Yes, sir. Let me challenge you with this. If you have the same attitude toward this house like we have done with these houses, what would your life look like? Think about that. <laughs> Come on. You're not called to beat this thing up like we've been taught. Mm -hmm. Hate to break it to you. But the same thing we're beating up is the same thing when it says in John 1, 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. I'm sorry, but I just didn't see Jesus ever taking the stance of saying, man, this stuff is just so rotten. And it's rotten. It's evil. It's, it's horrible. No. It's more like a TV screen. What are you projecting on it? It takes its cubes. It's mechanical. Excellent. Whatever you program it Excellent. with, that's what it's going to act out. Excellent. So you got to reprogram it. Don't go beating up on it. Reprogram it. Yeah. It's only acting off what you program it with. Exactly. Reprogram it. What do you do with reprogram? Change the way you think. How do you change the way you think? Here's a thought. What about believe the good news? What if you actually believe that you were in Christ and you didn't have to do something every time to get, to get back in? Right, right. What about we get rid of some of these phrases where, man, I just need to get into the presence of God. Stop. Amen. Again, another phrase you've got to get out of your vocabulary. Mm. Those little things, Jesus said it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. That's right. Those little phrases like that, more of you, less of me. Do you know what's going to happen if that happens? It's going to be nobody left. God's in you. Yes. And God threw away the key. Yes. And if you keep saying, God, more of you and none of me, God's like, what do you want me to do here? I mean, <laughs> I go, you're going too. If I said, I mean, what are we doing here? <laughs> Accept it. Say this with me. The Spirit of God is in me. The Spirit of God is in me. And I am in the Spirit of God. I am in the Spirit of God. As Jesus is. As Jesus is. 
So am I in this world. So am I in this world. Say that again, because you gotta believe this thing. Yeah. Mm. Say the spirit of God is in me. The spirit of God is in me. And the spirit of God likes to live there. And the spirit of God likes to live there. Say this with me. Say, I am sorry, I am sorry, sorry for, beating for beating up my body and treating it like a criminal. I determined today to discipline my thoughts in the mind of Christ. Do you know what that means? It says in Corinthians, it says to take those thoughts captive. Yeah. Yes. What are you doing with those thoughts? Mm -hmm. That means you're making them prisoner. You want me to tell you how you handle a bad thought? No. We were taught, take that thought, get rid of it. No! The next time an evil thought, a lustful thought comes yeah. into your mind, yeah. instead of, oh, I gotta get rid of it, gotta get rid of it, oh, I gotta go. No, 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 no. Yeah. Take that thing and hold it prisoner and don't let it go yeah. in Christ. Come on. Get you something that Christ has said about that and don't let it go. Yeah. Make that thing marinate like a cucumber in brine solution until it becomes pickled. Come on. Man. And when it comes out, just like a cucumber comes out of the brine solution, and you've got to give it a new name. Uh, We're not calling these cucumbers that became pickles. Uh, 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 <laughs> no, they're called pickles. That's it. Yeah. So when that thought comes out of that thing you put it in in Christ, this is why you have to discipline your mindset toward taking up scriptures about what God is saying. And watch this. Uh, Psalms 138.2, mm. when it says, he has magnified mm -hmm. your word above all your name. That's right. Actually, let me help you with that. Mm. It's not that the word is above the name. Magnified, made bigger, and it's actually according to yes. your name. Wow. That means the name of something in scripture embodied the nature of that, that one. It carried everything that that one was. So when it says magnify your name, your word above or according to your name, what it's really saying is you will know the extent and the fullness of God's word by following and staying and remaining in the nature of God. How do you find that? Mm. Simple. Yeah. Mm. This is what I do with my people. Come on. I have a guy right now that says, Chris, I just feel like that. God's just going to do this to me. Mm. And I'll say, okay. I'll tell you what you do. i say, go into the four gospels. And I want you to find me at least one place. That's it. Just one. Where Jesus did any of that, what you're talking about. When you find it, I said, let me know. And I'll support you with it. Never finds it. <laughs> because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. You know what that means? That doesn't mean God's way over here and you're down. No. Read the whole thing. What you'll find out, what's actually being said is, my ways of mercy are higher than your ways of mercy. Mm -hmm. My ways of kindness and thoughts of kindness are higher than your thoughts of kindness. Mm -hmm. The fact that we can have a problem and wrestle with God being corrective and restorative should tell you how you need to be redeemed. Mm -hmm. Let me give you another one. Mm -hmm. Another one we say. Well, you know my heart's evil and desperately wicked. Mm -hmm. Man, who can know it? Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. All hearts were evil and desperately wicked before the finished work of Christ. That's right. What do you think it means when it says there's none that's good? No, not one. Come on. The focus is not on the no, not one. The focus is on the goodness of God that says, I will give you a new heart. Come on. I will give you a new spirit. Yeah. Let me ask you, where are you at in that equation? Mm. Come on. That's what I thought. Yeah. Nowhere. Mm. You had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. Just like you had nothing to do with what they did in the gardens whenever they flubbed that up. Right. Same thing. I don't know why we think we need to come in and help God in this situation. I have no clue. But we preached it like that. Right. How about this? <clears throat> I'm not advocating for you to go out there and live a life full of sin and just do horrible things. What I am saying is this. What if you believe the finished work of Christ and what if you start there? Mm. What if you start like, look, an eagle as a baby eagle starts as a baby eagle yes. right. and believes it is that. What if you started every day 
I am in God and nothing can take me out. Amen. And what if at some point you begin to get up and you didn't even have to say it, you just begin to walk like it. <clears throat> Want me to tell you the 100% success rate I found on that? Come on now. Things that you struggled with. <clears throat> Somebody has to tap you on your shoulder and say, Oh yeah, remind you. Do you remember that? Uh -huh. I was like, I forgot all about that. Uh -huh. And it's not even a struggle anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, you can keep doing it how you've been doing it if you want. Mm -hmm. But what you're conscious and aware of mm -hmm. as a dominant thought is what you reproduce. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you're consciously aware of, man, I should have done that. Man, it was so horrible. I can't believe I did that. Do you know that speaks more to your innocence than it does to mm -hmm. what you did? The fact that you're concerned that you did it, duh, think about it. <laughs> You've got a new heart and a new spirit already. Yeah, absolutely. If you didn't, you wouldn't be thinking about it. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm encouraging you today, repent. Yeah. What am I saying repent of? Repent of the horrible way that you have viewed God. Mm. Because until that changes, mm. you can't transform as a real son of God daughter of God with the same authority and title to walk out and restore the earth. Mm -hmm. If you're going to get busy restoring and reconciling the earth, you can't reconcile the earth by weaponizing the Bible. Mm. Sorry. Mm. The, the disciples tried that. Wants to call fire out of heaven? Yeah. So quick to go there. Work, Jesus man. said, no. no. You don't know what spirit you're of. Mm. All right. I'm finished officially. <laughs> That's it. I have more, but I'm going to put a pin in it good. right there. That's good. I hope I haven't gone over anybody's head today. Yeah. And that the basis of anything that you take away yeah. from this is this. Is that it is your responsibility to walk out like God in the earth. Yes. All right. And if you just simply start there and believe it. Say this with me. I had some, I did have some things for y'all. I wanted y'all to do as well. <laughs> All right, say it with me. This might be difficult for some people, but I need to say it with some gusto. Uh, uh, Here we go. Yeah. I am good. I am good. I might have messed with some people. I can't, no, no, say it again. I am good. I am good. I am worthy. I am worthy. I am in perfect union. I am in perfect union. With my father. With my father. I abandon. I abandon. Old habits. Old habits. And old thoughts. And old thoughts. Of how I view God. Of how I view God. And I choose. And I choose. New ones. New ones. That align. With how Jesus revealed God. I forgive myself, I forgive myself and, I release my worries and I release my worries to my Father. To my Father. As Jesus is, As Jesus is so, am I, so am I in this world, in this world right now. Right right now. now. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, give God another shout of praise. Amen. Glory to God. This is the the part of changing. All yes. this is renewing. Yes. This is renewing. Yes. This is yes. renewing. You know, sometimes uh, you're going to hear some things that kind of go against the grain of what we have been taught and uh, how we've been taught. And traditionally, we have been given uh, a certain way of thinking and processing this information. Uh, and then when something new comes along, we don't actually know how to digest it. Uh, so take it just a little bit at a time um, and, and just begin to absorb it and allow the Spirit of God to begin to work on you. Amen? Yes. It's a process. It's the process. We teach the process. Amen? And, uh, and if you don't really fully understand it, understand this, is that where you are today uh, became a through a process. Amen. 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 So the process works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just, just flat out, the process does work because you are the image of the process of how you have been taught and trained. Yes. Amen. 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 So now there's a new process. 
and we're taking it on, and we're walking in this thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, we thank God today uh, for those of y'all joining in with us. Uh, if y'all have any prayer requests, we'd love to pray with you and believe God with you about anything. Continue to pray uh, for our city uh, as we go through these uh, uh, times of restoration and healing. Um, do we have any prayer requests here today? Does anybody need prayer about anything? The Western of Louisville. The Western of Louisville. Okay. Six, six people shot last night. Last night. The West End of Louisville. Take us all apart. Had, had, a, had a, a homicide. Six shot. Two died. Two died. And four shot. Wounded. Right. Right. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Spirit of murder. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Can, can I get prayer for, we really need to sell that hanger. Mm-hmm. It's got to sell. It's got to sell. It's got to go. Praise God. Amen. Well, we're going to believe God uh, that that camper will sail. Amen. Amen. The right buyer is going to come. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And you want to sell it for a certain price. Yes. Is that right? We're not even trying to make any money off of it. Just get rid of the loan. We just want to get it. Yeah, just money whatever. It. Okay. They got it listed for a bunch, but I don't care. You guys can have all that. They just right here. Just get out. All right. Glory to God, glory to God. Well, praise God, praise God. Amen. Well, let's go uh, to the throne of grace to obtain mercy today. Yes, ma'am. Sister, Sister Helen has been sick for several days, just vague, just things what come and going. But she took her blood pressure and it was sky high. So she went ahead and took her medicine and went back to bed. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so we need prayer over her health and strength. Mm -hmm. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Everybody, anybody else while we're here? In this place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We love you. We glorify you. We thank you today. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord God. Father, we thank you as we have brought these uh, requests before your throne. You said to come boldly to obtain grace and mercy uh, during these times of trouble and need. Uh, Father, we Declare in the name of Jesus that, Father, these 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 murders, these homicides, that, Lord, uh, you have a solution, Father God. You got a way to 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 fix this, to turn it around, Lord God. Father, I do know that your word says, uh, wherever sin abides, grace does much more abound, Father God. Lord, and we thank you for the grace and mercy, Lord God. We Thank you, Lord God, that, Father, some of these things are, are an eye-opener. They're waking us up. Allow the sons and the daughters of God to rise up, yes. Father God, to heal this land, Lord God, to turn situations around, Father God. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, that, Father, may we even see before things happen. May we have uh, an understanding. May we... Have a visual uh, before things even happen that, Father God, we can begin to intercede and intervene on behalf of these situations, Father God, whatever it is, Lord, whatever is coming our way, Father. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for Sister Helen. We thank you for healing her body. Father, touch her now, Father God. Lord, healing, Father, is just part of who you are, and it's been given to us already. We just walk it in this thing, Father God. Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for selling this camper, Lord yes, God. Yes, Father, yes. Lord, may the buyers come quick, fast, and a hurry. May it sell even this week, Father. We declare this is so. We receive it, Lord God. Father, we entreat, Father God, your presence, your, your glory, your honor, your majesty to saturate. Father God, our cities and our state, our nation, Father God. Father, may there be a move, Lord God, unprecedented and has never taken place like before. May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit even begin now as we walk into this time of celebration of Pentecost. Father, we love you and we bless you. 
thank you and we glorify you and we worship you today. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. 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 amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, give the Lord another shout of praise. Amen. amen. Glory to God. We ask God to uh, continue to, uh, to pray. Uh, the Pastor Derek, or Dr. Derek, Dr. Clarissa are starting their Word Explosion Conference this evening, and it'll go throughout this week. Uh, you can probably look it up at the Spirit of Love Center. Uh, here in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, to see what the, the days and the times and uh, what the services are like. Uh, so we're going to uh, continue to believe God for just a, a great manifestation uh, to take place during uh, these meetings. So uh, just pray for us as we pray for them and believe God for great things. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to go out with a shout out to the Lord on the count of three. Are you ready? Here we yes. go. Yeah. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus.